Hello, member delegates. Uh, please allow me to quickly share with you what the Malaysian government has done in face of this so-called economic new normal. The Malaysian government rolled out the Free Hatin and Panjana programs and the Malaysian parliament jointly approved 45 billion ringgit of cash injection, which is roughly about 11 billion US dollars. The government intervened in the banking sector, enforcing a loan moratorium to all borrowers. The government provided wage support system in an, in an attempt to stem rising unemployment. It provided cash handouts to support the underprivileged. It injected billions to try to stimulate the economy and in particular the e-commerce sector. Malaysia used a multi-faceted approach to contain the, the economy from a free fall, but challenges ahead are still plentiful. Malaysians are told to remain vigilant, and the people in return demand that the government be more generous with fiscal spending and at the same time, at the same time be accountable and transparent. However, in my personal humble opinion, the single biggest factor to Malaysia's relative economic success is the fact that the political interference was kept minimal on all public health decisions. Malaysian doctors, nurses, health workers and other frontliners were given full powers to implement COVID-19 health measures. My fellow delegates, I wish to now suggest three policy ideas that we can develop and work as a group. First is a call for all ASEAN countries to share their successes and also challenges in containing COVID-19. What I wish to encourage is the active sharing of policies and implementation experiences, both the good and the bad. ASEAN citizens have much in common. We share a common Asian heritage. As such, any successful policy originating from any ASEAN country should be more adaptable by the rest. I truly believe we can learn much more from each other than we can learn from other developed regions such as East Asia or Europe. Difficult challenges should be shared so that other countries, other ASEAN countries can avoid similar pitfalls. In short, an active dialogue on COVID-19 policies must be pursued to shape a united regional narrative and response to COVID-19. Second is the issue regarding travel, in particular reg regarding travel bubbles in green countries. On this front, Malaysia has added a couple of lines to the current IPA economic resolution. While some ASEAN countries are doing their best to contain the pandemic, other more successful ASEAN countries should consider implementing these travel bubbles. The third and very last issue I want to raise is a call towards embracing more localization of our economic activities. In the last 40 years or so, most ASEAN countries have benefited in one way or another to globalization. Today, most of our economic activities are fully integrated into the global supply chain. However, when COVID-19 pandemic struck, we witnessed major disruptions in the global supply chain, with the grim prospect of even greater challenges in the near future, whether from another pandemic or from climate change. The lesson learned now is that we need to actively reduce economic globalization as a mitigating strategy. It does not matter whether we are pro-globalization or not, more and more corporations, the real world out there, are consolidating the production of goods and services and focus on localization. In the ASEAN context, I believe we can explore the idea of an expanded localization policy to something that I would call regionalization. If we act in concert, plan our supply chain on a regional basis, we can bulletproof our production of goods and services to such future challenges. On that note, I end my short speech on behalf of Malaysia wishing all the very best to your respective economic endeavours. Malaysia is fully committed to ASEAN economic solidarity.